it seemed like that was it for Vince, but he came back a couple of times after to be involved with storylines uh, with people like Bret Hart. A uh, very interesting way they brought uh, you know Vince McMahon back. For a while there, they made you believe that uh, Donald Trump had purchased Raw, and that lasted about a week before that storyline was killed, because I believe they were insulting the intelligence of the fans. You know, Donald Trump purchases Raw, but uh, the WWE logo is still on the turnbuckles, and uh, it still involves WWE people. You know, you would have thought uh, Donald Trump would have done more with Raw than he did, probably uh, turn it into his version of the WWE Apprentice or something. So, I, I really think that, uh, you know, WWE tried to do a lot with the general manager role, and this is going to be the first time they're doing something different. For the, look for the last eight years, we've seen the same thing done over and over again. And uh, a lot could come uh, from one general manager on every show. We could see the unification of the shows for the first time in ten years since the split brand thing uh, came to be. Uh, we, we've seen a lot done. You know, uh, Ric Flair. I guess you could consider Ric Flair as the general manager of Raw for a while, too, when him and Vince McMahon were business partners. And Ric Flair came back to the WWE for the first time in about 10 years. So, a lot could happen, you know. And I made a lot of notes about the general manager position for every show we saw a general manager on. As I mentioned, Eric Bischoff's reign lasted from 2002 to 2006. Since then, we have seen people like Stone Cold Steve Austin, Shane and Stephanie McMahon be the general manager for Raw for a while. We've even seen an anonymous general manager... And they've even gone as far as to name Mike Adamley as the general manager of Raw. And for a while there, when the Raw general manager position was vacated, I thought they were taking it away. But uh, we've seen a lot of people, you know, be the Raw general manager, and it kind of changed up. You know, for a couple of years, we saw the SmackDown general manager position be the revolving door. And then the SmackDown general manager position uh, became the Raw general manager position for the revolving door scenario. It seemed like the raw general manager position would change every couple of months. Every three to four months, we would see a new general manager from Jonathan Coachman to the anonymous general manager to Mike Adamley. It would kind of change up uh, every couple of months, and it was really, really atrocious seeing that role change every single week. It was almost like, you know, cut us some slack. You know, we're getting used to people like Bret Hart be the general manager of Raw, then he goes away, then all of a sudden we see this anonymous Raw general manager come completely out of nowhere, catch everybody off guard, we're trying to figure out who the anonymous general manager is, and it ends with Austin running over the general manager computer with his ATV. So that kind of really sucked. We didn't find out who the anonymous general manager of Raw is. Hopefully, after WrestleMania, we'll find out who the uh, undisputed general manager is, and that could be a very appropriate title for the winner of the WrestleMania feud and WrestleMania ankle between Theodore Long and John Laranis, which is bound to continue after WrestleMania. Although I can see Triple H coming uh, out on TV after the Undertaker program is finished up and uh, taking John Laranis out for good, if not him, CM Punk, after being squared of the title. You know, a lot of scenarios could develop, but I really don't think this is it for whoever loses. Uh, the general manager role by the end of WrestleMania 28. I think we're going to see Theodore Long and uh, John Laronidas feud for a considerable amount of time. And if not them, uh, Punk or Triple H will take care of Laronidas if Laronidas doesn't come back as a full-time competitor, which I can also see happening. The ECW general manager position lasted for about four years, and we've seen people like Armando Estrada and Tiffany be the ECW general manager. Paul Heyman was the SmackDown general manager. Kurt Angle was the SmackDown general manager for a number of months when he was injured. A lot of things happened uh, with the SmackDown general manager position. We saw that become the revolving door first before changing from SmackDown to Raw being the revolving door. We saw people like Vicky Guerrero land a job position with WWE before becoming a manager and creating her own stable like we're seeing her do now with people like Ziggler and Swagger. Uh, we saw wrestlers have a full-time role when they were injured, like Kurt Angle is the perfect example of how the general manager role allowed a wrestler who was injured to uh, go through the rehab process and still be on television. And after they uh, healed, they would get fired or something and be reinstated as a full-time competitor. Uh, it was really cool seeing what they did with the general manager position uh, on the last of it. 
Uh, it seemed like, you know, they were using it as a door for somebody to come back who was injured uh, and go through the rehab process and still be on television. So it was really cool seeing people like Kurt Angle uh, use that as a way of still staying on TV for a couple of months while they were healing. Then someone like Vince or the new general manager would come in and fire them. So it was really, really cool. I didn't agree with Vicky Guerrero being the SmackDown GM, though. It was kind of insulting to everything the Guerrero legacy had built up in WWE. And I still say to this day it was because of that that uh, Chavo Guerrero left the WWE and tried to go to TNA. So I really, really think that, you know, uh, the Vicky Guerrero thing was completely unnecessary. It was kind of insulting to uh, Eddie Guerrero's death, of course, which happened one year before Vicky Guerrero comes in and becomes the SmackDown general manager. And she was general manager of SmackDown uh, for a while. She even got married to Edge as uh, the general manager of SmackDown. You had Edge as the world champion, and they were referred to as the first power couple since McMahon and Helmsley. So I, I really, really think that, you know, a lot happened. Uh, especially on the SmackDown brand, from the general manager role coming in. We saw people like Paul Heyman, Kurt Angle, Vicky Guerrero uh, be the revolving door on SmackDown for a while. A lot happened, and uh, a lot of general managers uh, have come to WWE since then. We saw the SmackDown general manager position be the revolving door first, the Raw general manager door become the revolving door. Uh, then we had the ECW brand implemented for the first time on June in 2006. Uh, that lasted from 2006 to 2010. People like Armando Estrada, Tiffany donned the role of the general manager of ECW. Armando Estrada was a good ECW general manager before he became an in-ring competitor, but he wasn't that great of a general manager. I think Tiffany was the more entertaining general manager on ECW, and that allowed the male demographic to keep watching ECW to see a bit of skin every week as the ECW general manager, and before being released, Tiffany had a good exit from WWE by being a, you know, in-ring competitor on SmackDown. She was the assistant of Theodore Long when he was the SmackDown general manager. She did a lot, and I think it was really cool seeing her as the ECW GM before she left. As I mentioned, they're not doing much with the NXT show, just introducing new talent that eventually landed a position on Raw and SmackDown, and they just have got a uh, NXT general manager from William Regal, so that's really cool what they're doing with all the shows, having a general manager for each show. I guess the uh, creative team said, hey, we don't have a GM for NXT. That's something new for William Regal to do after he was the commentator on NXT for a number of months. So I, I, I really think that the SmackDown, the uh, Raw, the NXT uh, general manager position even, uh, allowed a lot of superstars to remain on television when they were heard have a permanent role with WWE for a number of months, kept a lot of people on TV, and I think kept a lot of people happy. I mean, you can't say that Theodore Long hasn't been having the time of his life after being a referee with WWE for a number of years. He finally gets an on-screen role as a, you know, in-ring performer even. So it, it, it's really, really cool what kind of opportunities the uh, general manager position have given. A lot of people like Bret Hart. Uh, that allowed Bret Hart to come back on WWE TV for a number of months after uh, having that feud with Vince McMahon. It seemed like the only reason Bret Hart had come back was to feud with Vince, promote a couple of things, have a new DVD released, and he comes back as the uh, general manager of Raw for a number of months. I think it was about two months. Uh, Bret Hart was the general manager of Raw before uh, exiting the WWE, so... You know, it provided Bret Hart with a lot of opportunity, and not only Bret Hart, the uh, general manager position was a door of opportunity, if anything, for a lot of people, like Kurt Angle, who used it when he was hurt, Vicky Guerrero to come back to make a bit of extra money after uh, Eddie Guerrero left her with about $500,000 worth of debt. So I, I really think that, you know, the, uh, the general manager position, if anything, and especially the SmackDown general manager position over the last number of years, has been a door of opportunity. Not many people have lasted very long as the general manager of uh, Raw and SmackDown, especially Mike Adamley and Bret Hart, who only lasted a couple of months. But it was a door of opportunity. And as I mentioned, the Raw general manager position definitely created a lot of controversy with Mike Adamley, with Eric Bischoff first off in 02. Nobody ever thought that uh, Vince McMahon and Eric Bischoff would see eye to eye long enough 
I'd have something like the wrong general manager position create so much controversy before Eric Bischoff left the company to pursue other venues. So it was really cool seeing, you know, the business relationship develop over, uh, you know, the number of years that Eric Bischoff uh, was the general manager between Vince and uh, Eric. So it was really, really cool. And a lot of people really didn't believe it first off. You know, people were wiping their eyes saying, you know, what the fuck is going on here? You know, Vince McMahon and Eric Bischoff didn't see eye to eye for years. Now all of a sudden they're business partners. You know, nobody thought that it, uh, Ric Flair and, Eric, and Vince McMahon uh, rather would be business partners on WWE TV and uh, Ric Flair would be the inaugural general manager of Raw, in my opinion, before it became a split-branded show. So uh, I really think that it's amazing what the general manager position has done for a lot of people. And a lot of people are favoring Theodore Long to be the permanent general manager of both shows. I, I really don't think it's going to happen. I think a lot can happen from this uh, Laronitis uh, Long feud. Uh, Laronitis can take over both shows for a number of months before Triple H comes back and kills him after the Taker Triple H angle finishes up on uh, WrestleMania's card. So. A lot can happen, and a lot has already happened with uh, the general manager position. We might not even see a permanent general manager for both shows. I would love to see Theodore Long as the general manager of both shows. I just don't think it's going to happen. So our poll for this week has come to be, who do you believe will be the permanent general manager of both shows? Simply put, that would be a good weekly poll for our show. Uh, who do you think would be uh, the general manager full-time if it does indeed unify after WrestleMania and the 5-on-5, 6 on five, six